I'm the Fly Rate Master, and today we're doing a suggested video by one of my subscribers. Car lines I love to work on and I hate to work on. All right, number one, any car, and you old timers, you know, the old guys like me, remember these days feedback carburetors any car that had a feedback carburetor for you youngins that would be basically a computer controlled carburetor i know oxymoron this they didn't work well they were just stupid pieces of junk and they never worked right even factor i feel so sorry for the dealer techs that had to deal with them brand new and when I had to deal with them, it wasn't too bad because most of the time when they started failing, we ripped that stuff out and put a regular carburetor on and the customers were happy because we weren't in the emissions area at the time. All right, next one, Mercedes-Benz. First thing I hate about Mercedes-Benz is their information. Now, European car makers are a little different in how they do their diagnostic information they're actually contained in their scan tool now a mercedes-benz oe scan tool is twenty five thousand dollars it's not feasible for anything but a specialty shop to invest in that tool now i know a lot of guys are going to comment well get auto logic well auto logic is not what it used to be the blue box that lets you program code modules all that stuff is dead and dying they are no longer updating the tool they are no longer supporting the tool they new, now have a new system out that is basically a supported with a call-in helpline j box nowhere near how awesome they used to be the other thing is the customers most owners of mercedes-benz and now there's some great customers that own mercedes-benz most of those awesome mercedes-benz drivers are few and far between but usually they're very awesome the other part are you did brakes on a car it made a squeak one time pulling out of their driveway six months after you did the brakes and they're back at your door the next day screaming at you because their brakes started making noise that's just an example but it has happened here we actually no longer work on mercedes-benz for multiple reasons not just that uh, we were struggling with information our dedicated Eurotech left and our comeback ratio was was super high on Mercedes and it just wasn't worth it for our business model here to continue with that kind of, of you know vehicle line and we were the, the, my boss is not going to invest in the OE tool to fully support that product line because they put a lot of parts under security so you can't even you know you put a transmission in it you have to tow it up to mercedes for them to program it or you have to try to do a j box and hope it works and it, it, it just isn't worth it. number two i hate working on sob now if any of you um, are fans of Amzie's Corner, you know, he's a huge fan, Saab fan. Let them die. It's a dead car company. I hate working on Saabs. They're pain in the butt. So many stupid problems. And worse is the ones we're seeing is where General Motors got heavily involved and they made them worse. So just you know let them die there they were never that great of cars in my opinion but we work on a lot of sobs here 
and people spend a lot of money on those socks. So it's kind of a love-hate relationship. We, you know, anytime you I assign a sob to anybody, we, you know, that, he's got a sob story. <laughs> so next up, and I'm gonna link these two together because they're very similar vehicles, Jaguar and Land Rover. They are so many different hands in the pot. You know, you've got Land Rover has BMW powertrains. They got the old Buick powertrains. They got Ford in there. They got Volvo in there. Jaguar is the same. You got Ford guys in there. You've got Jaguar guys. Both their cooling systems are just nightmares to work on. Um, you know, when they stack four different plastic pieces together with an O-ring and you got to put it together and hope all those individual pieces don't leak. Nine times out of ten, they come back leaking, and, you know, it, it's... I, I don't, you know, it, it's never a good time when either one of those cars come in. We actually pronounced a uh, Land Rover today DOA. Blown head gaskets, and it's of the generation where chances are it's a cracked block, so I don't think the customer's going to fix it. Next up, Mitsubishi. Now, I'm sure some of you guys <clears throat> are going to go, oh, they're great cars. I don't know, because I've never seen one well-maintained. Everyone I've ever seen is just junked out, not taken care of, and in such poor shape that all you're doing is sticking a Band-Aid on it because the customer won't spend any money. Next one, the older Hyundai and Kias. Not the newer generations that have come since, but the older stuff. What piles of junk. Just piles. Now the newer stuff, I actually like working on. My mother-in-law owns a 11 Sonata. It's been a very good car. Just put a couple batteries in it, a bunch of bulbs. I put a master cylinder on it and just recently a starter. So it's been a very good car for her, you know, knock on wood. Um, Nissan, they are not my favorite car to work on. I actually today put a valve cover on a Altima because the tube seals are not serviceable in the field. Well, they technically kind of are, but valve cover is cheap and chances are it may not come out and go back in so we just do a new valve cover time and chain problems cvts we did a cvt last week the time and chain issues the the inner covers blowing the gaskets out you can make a good bit of money on nissans oh and bleeding their cooling systems you get done with a thermostat or whatever, radiator, you know, common failures on those. You get all done. Even if you use a vacuum filler, you still have no heat. You gotta crack open that bleeder, you know, let it run idle, pick up the front end, all sorts of stuff. Just to get the cooling system blood out. It, it's, ugh. All right, next one, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Now, Justin Dow, he works at a, a uh, Chrysler dealer, so I'm not going to give him too much crap about this one. I actually enjoy working on Chrysler vehicles, except they don't pay. Times on those cars are horrible. And I know dealer techs are getting great. I mean, when, when you're looking at a job and it pays 0.3 on warranty, 0.6 or you know whatever on customer pay and you're lucky to get it done in customer pay time lucky but I, for the cars themselves i don't mind working on them i've worked on a lot of them over the years so not really you know a car i really mind working on general motors 
General Motors has done a great job of aftermarket support. You know, how long have they had misfire monitors in pretty much everybody's scan tool? Because they were willing to release that information out to the aftermarket companies. Currently, with a J-Box, you have complete diagnostic capabilities with a subscription, GDS2, full programming, everything through a J-Box. I've got a lot of familiarity with GMs. I've worked on them for a lot of years, so I'm really comfortable working on them. So it's not really a, you know, I don't mind working on them. There's some cars, Cadillac Northstars, absolutely hate working on Cadillac Northstars, doing anything, including brakes. Hate those POSs. Ford. My experience with Ford is probably the most of any car line. It's just how my career has gone. I've worked on a ton of Fords over the years. I worked at a fleet shop that you were, I mean, you were working on five, six, seven Fords a day. Uh, I'm really familiar with the IDS, which we are fortunate enough to have an IDS here. It is my favorite scan tool, period, out of anything. You know, when you can go to data stream and acti activate any activatable component in data stream, so you can pick all your PIDs. One pet peeve about, you know, tests and different scan tools is, well, I want to look at this PID to see what's going on, but in that test, it doesn't should let me pick that PID. Why? I don't know why everybody hasn't gone to that system where in data stream you can actuate components. So, but I am the most familiar with Fords. Um, next up, Volkswagen Audi. I know a lot of guys are kind of intimidated by German cars. And what I always joke about is I got to, you know, channel my German heritage, you know, to deal with track wiring diagrams, how they do their diagnostics, you know, using VAGCOM. But there's a lot of good money in Volkswagens. Today, I did a valve cover, a combi valve, quick three hours, done. So I make a lot of hours on Volkswagen Audis. So I don't mind working on them. They're pretty easy to work on unless they're the really high-end Audis, V8s. Then they can be a little more difficult. Um, doing time of belts on them. You know, a lot of guys don't take the front end completely off on a front-facing engine. I can get the front end off in 20 minutes, 30 minutes at the most. So it makes perfect sense for me just to pull that front end off. I got it out of my way. Do the time and belt. I don't have to sit there and fiddle with the carrier in my way. So, personal preference, but that's how I do it. Next up, BMW. Another German car. As long as it's not a V8, I have no problem working on BMWs. I like working on BMWs. Behind the camera is a 5 Series. I'm doing an oil pan gasket on it and it's all wheel drive nice ticket not real hard the hardest part about it was dropping the subframe obviously i have to support the engine but you know not a hard job pays really well and it's a very nice you know car to work on as long as you understand their diagnostics setup all right one that it's kind of a love-hate relationship I've got is Volvo. Volvos pay okay. One of the stupidest things about Volvos is you go into their, you know, trouble tree for a check engine light. The first thing on that list is reprogram it. Really? You want me to reprogram it even though I haven't done any testing or anything. Is first thing is reprogram it. So it always in the back of my mind makes me worry. 
that I'm chasing a ghost code, not a real code, but it, it's nine times out of 10, it's a real code. It's just one of the idiosyncrasies of Volvo. All right. Obviously, I'm not going to touch on the exotics or anything like that because, well, you know, how many of you guys work on, you know, Lambos? Last one we're going to talk about are two, actually technically four, Honda, Acura, Toyota, and Lexus, and Scion, so five. Gravy cars. Easy to make money on them. Timing belts, water pumps on the later model Toyotas, air injection systems on the four sevens under the intake. Yeah, starters and air injection under the intake. Good idea, Toyota. I make money fixing them, so real easy to work on. A lot of pattern failures. I mean, in my area, cars hit 100,000 miles, sure making some money on that car. You know, you got timing belts, spark plugs. Oh, uh, you got starters, alternators, and on V6 Hondas, transmissions. So make a ton of money on Honda, Toyota products. I mean, they're just gravy train. I mean, the best way to put it is they are gravy train. They come in, the customers take care of them. And that's one of the biggest things for all of us is you gotta have a clientele that takes care of their cars. You got a customer that they could be driving a $100,000 BMW, but if they won't spend any money on it, it doesn't matter how easy that job is, if they're not gonna spend the money. So, hope you like this list. Let me know in the comments what cars you like working on and the cars you hate working on. And appreciate you watching. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. You know, complain about whatever car make I bad mouth that you like. It's fine. I am the flat rate master. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching.